Hey guys, I don't usually talk about current events on my channel, but it feels impossible to stay silent right now. I know that I have an audience and a platform on YouTube, and I want to use this platform to uplift the Black Lives Matter movement. As many of you know, the murder of George Floyd went viral all over social media and has sparked the protests that we're seeing in every single state in America and globally. As a biracial, white, and Asian woman, I know that my privilege has allowed me to thrive in America. It's allowed me to get a higher education. It's allowed me to have a higher chance of getting a mortgage. It allows me to have a higher chance of getting a high paying job. And my privilege allows me to not be scared to be murdered by someone whose job is supposedly to protect and serve the people because of the color of my skin. Systematic racism is what America was built on. The repercussions of the disgusting oppression of black people in America continues to impact black Americans today. Black Americans continue to feel the oppression of systematic racism in all aspects of life. We're talking education, healthcare, and just access to basic resources. Things like getting a house, getting a mortgage, getting approved for a loan. Read up on redlining and see what that is and how it impacts black communities. Editing Tia here. Um, I'll make this point again throughout the video, but I wanted to insert it here because it's so important to remember that we have to amplify the black voices. If you're only getting your information from white people, that isn't enough. You need to listen to the black community and actually follow what it is that they need from us as allies in order to be the best active ally. I hesitated on making this video because I didn't want to act like I was the expert on everything. I have never experienced what a black person in America has experienced. So the reason that I'm talking today is because I want to try to use my platform and my privilege to get attention and awareness towards this movement. But the ultimate goal of all of this is to uplift the black community. We have to stand by them and support them, but allow their voices to lead the movement. And look, I'm doing a lot of research right now too. You know, quarantine is awful, right? And, and COVID-19, the fact that COVID-19 is going on at the same time as this, but this is a time to use quarantine and being inside to read, to educate yourself. Don't rely on the black community to educate you. They have been pushing for rights for years. And look, I understand I have not been the most vocal ally as I should have been in the past, but now I'm gonna use my platform, I'm gonna use my voice, and I'm gonna use my privilege to make sure that we don't see a repeat of this in 20 years. It isn't enough to just be anti-racist and to want equality. Look, I understand, I definitely, have felt that and had that mindset where I thought, well, you know what, I'm not racist, right? So it's okay, but it's not okay. We have to be active allies for the black community. We have to use our privilege to make real change happen. There are plenty of resources on how to be an active ally. I know it can feel confusing and it's new for a lot of people. So there's a ton of resources. I'm gonna link in my description on how to be an active ally. A lot of you guys have been seeing stuff on social media, signing petitions, donating, calling your local legislators. There's a ton of email templates and phone call templates for when you wanna reach out to legislators. It's, they're great resources. I'll link them in my description. Please utilize them and do reach out to your legislators. They are listening to their constituents and we have an opportunity to show them what we really want and vote for the people that we really want. That's getting into my next point here. Voting is one of the biggest things that we can do. We have a long way until the general election, but we have to be informed voters and make sure that we don't let that fucking Cheeto stay in our White House. I don't care if people are like, oh, I don't want to be political. Fuck Donald Trump. The way that he has been handling these peaceful protests, bringing out tear gas in front of the White House so he can have a photo op in front of the fucking church. Don't even get me started on him, okay? He is not a leader and he's proven that time and time again. If you are going to vote for Donald Trump, I urge you to reconsider. I think a lot of people are kind of in this cancel mode right now and they're just saying like, fuck you. If you are thinking about voting for Donald Trump, I need you to look me in the eyes right now. And I want you to think about what's going on in our world right now and how poorly he's been handling everything. And I want you to think about if you want in 20 years for shit to still be racist, for innocent black people to still be killed out on the street and to have a leader that militarizes the police to attack, I don't wanna live in a world like that. I can't live in a world like that. So that's why I'm gonna use my power to vote to make sure that that doesn't happen. Now, voting for the president is important, but there's a lot of other local officials that play really big roles in what happens in your community. 
I personally feel like I have not really known a lot about what goes on in the political arena besides the bigger positions like the president. But now I'm doing my research because I want to be the most informed voter I can be when the ballot comes out. There's a lot of ways you can get started. I've been trying to listen to political podcasts. I've been trying to read the news. I know sometimes the news and the media has been a big mess, but trying to stay informed with what's happening in Congress right now is a great way to become a more informed voter. And I know it's intimidating. That was one of the biggest things where I was thinking like, okay, after all this stuff has been happening right now, what can I do as an active ally? And how can I best vote and use my power to change what's going on? And it's overwhelming. There's a lot on the ballot. There's a lot that we have to consider as voters, but you don't have an excuse to just not care anymore. We have to care because we can't let this happen again. We can't have innocent black children be killed by the police, by the people that are supposed to serve and protect us. And we have to voice our concerns and make sure that they turn into policy. Now is the time to educate yourself, to look and really read the different resources that are out there. I think with social media, it's easy to just like quickly repost and just post and share and post and share. Really read the shit that's out there. Sit down and read what's going on. Make sure you're informed before you go and share different materials out there. We saw what happened on Blackout Tuesday with all those black squares, right? It came from a good place. I, I posted one. I wanted to show solidarity, but the black community realized, hey, this isn't helpful. It's blocking the hashtag. It's blocking resources. This isn't what we want. And it's important to listen to the black community and change your actions. I changed my post and I made sure that people knew where resources were on my page, in my bio, so they could go and actually do something for the movement. What was sad was to see so many people not take down their black squares. So right, the issue that we saw was those black squares were clogging up the Black Lives Matter hashtag. So people were asking to, to not tag those in Black Lives Matter. But we continue to see people doing that even after the black community had said, hey, let's not do that. It's okay to make mistakes. But when the black community then tells you, hey, that's not right, let's do this instead. Listen, grow from your mistakes and then take action in the right direction. I know a ton of people who are scared to speak out about how they feel. You know, they feel strongly about what's been going on, but they're scared to say the wrong thing. It's so important to use your voice and uplift the black community. If you get something wrong, that's okay. Listen to the black community, right your wrongs, and move forward. That's part of learning. It's part of growing. It's okay to change your viewpoints as you gain new information. That's a big part of learning and growing and making real change. Back to some of the action items that we can take to help uplift the black community right now. Signing petitions. It takes two seconds. There is no excuse to not be signing petitions. There are tons of Twitter threads. You can just go down all those petitions and make sure that they get heard and they're amplified. Donating. I'm gonna have a ton of resources to donate in my description box, so I highly urge you to do so. There's a bunch of different places where you can donate and it'll split your donation amongst a bunch of different bail funds, which is awesome, as well as uh, some that do the same thing, but for black organizations. I wanted to mention another way that you can donate if you don't have the funds or the ability to donate right now. A lot of videos are up on YouTube right now where you can go and watch them and watch through the ads and all the ad revenue goes towards black organizations and goes towards helping the movement. Such a smart use of the YouTube platform. I also wanted to remind you guys that this video, if it gets monetized, all of the proceeds will go towards black organizations. I'll reach out on social media and ask from the black community what the best ways to divert the money will be. I'll keep you guys updated on that calling your legislators, emailing your legislators, and making sure that your voice is heard. It may seem mundane. It may seem like, well, they're not really going to answer the call. They're not really going to do anything with it. I actually, only for a day, I worked in the office for Congresswoman Doris Matsui. My job was to answer phone calls from constituents and log their calls in a database. So yeah, you're right. Maybe Doris Matsui isn't going to answer the call. Maybe it's the, your exact message isn't going to get to her. But if that database is flooded with similar messages about taking action to what's going on, that's going to get noticed. There's a ton of phone call and email templates available out there. So if you're struggling to come up with the words, I know I was nervous about that when I was trying to send messages. I'm, I wasn't able to really write the cleanest message all in one shot, but a lot of other well-educated and very smart other people have done that work for you. So use their resources and use it for good. It's time to have uncomfortable conversations with the people around you. This one's big. I've been watching some of the things that the black community has been putting out on social media. And one thing that I, I noticed 
was that they're really urging people to have these uncomfortable conversations about racism with the people around you, your friends, your family, your coworkers. A lot of people are scared to have these conversations because they feel like they're gonna lose friends. Do you really want friends who don't believe in basic human rights? I don't, <laughs> to be honest with you, I really don't. And you shouldn't either. And more than that too, it's important to have that conversation and bridge that gap and try to get them to understand where you're coming from. One thing I wanna mention is also the protests. Their importance to this movement is huge. But I know a lot of us feel like we can't protest due to the virus or having immunocompromised family members. But like I'm gonna mention in the rest of the video, there's a lot of ways to still be an active ally if you can't attend the protests and ways to support. But for the protesters out there, I will leave information in my description box all about protesting, the best ways to go about it, resources if you are going to go protesting, what to do, what not to do, anything that I find that I feel like is helpful, I'm going to leave in my description box. One last thing. I saw this thing on, on social media and I thought it was a, a good message. It was talking about how there are a lot of different lanes in this movement, right? Some people are posting on social media and sharing resources. Some people are out there protesting. Some people are donating. Some people are having tough conversations with family members. Some people are mental health experts and are helping those going through mental health issues right now. There's a lot of different lanes in the path to progress and it's important to not feel overwhelmed and feel like you need to be dominating every single lane. Do what you can within your constraint but make sure you're doing it with passion. Make sure you're doing it with genuine passion. Don't get tricked by all this performative allyship. If you're not really an ally off of social media, then there's no point to what you're posting. Your, your posts and your, your ideas are hollow. And most importantly, we need to uplift our black community members. We need to let them speak. We need to hear what they're saying, really listen and apply it to what we're doing. Don't turn this into all about me. I don't, I'm done hearing about white people talking about how they used to be racist. Sit your ass down. Nobody wants to hear about all that. Learn from what you've done in the past. And I wanna see active allyship now. This goes for outside in the protests as well. I don't wanna see any more Twitter videos of white ass kids looting shit and tagging things up when people from the black community are telling them to stop and they aren't. Jake Paul, I'm looking at you. If you're gonna be a protester and you're a person of privilege or you're a white person, don't be doing that shit. Listen to the black community and follow what they're doing. You need to help them get their message out. It's not about you. If you're out there looting and causing a problem with, as a person of privilege, you are dismantling all of the work that the black community has been doing to get change. So fuck you. I don't wanna see that shit on my timeline anymore. Period, I don't wanna see it. The last thing I want to say is make sure to check in with your mental health. There's a lot of triggering things going on right now on social media and what's going on in these protests. So it's important to take a step back when you need to. Take some time to center yourself and, uh, and come back when you're ready, if you feel ready to do so. And like I said before, there's a lot of other lanes that you could be in to help the movement. You don't have to just be posting on social media. If there's another way for you to help, I've seen a lot of artists donate the proceeds from their art to black organizations. That's a great way to use something unique and a talent to you and apply it to the community. That's great. And look, I'm not trying to get any praise. I don't wanna see you know, a bunch of thank you for doing this. This is the bare minimum. For other people of privilege out there, if you're trying to seek out some sort of praise for the stuff that you've been doing, you're not doing it for the right reasons. That's everything for me. Please check out all of the resources I'll have linked in my description box. Super important to get involved if you can in whatever way that you can. Hope you guys are staying safe and I'll see you guys next time.